All right. So what I had just done in the last video was puppet warp my creature. And I changed it from this pose to this pose, mostly just so that foot was a little bit further down. But it also gives it a little bit more stability within this space. So it's a subtle change, but a helpful change. If I want to puppet warp it more, and I want to try out different poses, I can duplicate it and then go to Edit Puppet Warp. And maybe this time I'm going to work on this, this leg. So I'm going to anchor the other legs, front and back. And then I'm going to isolate this leg, right? Ooh. Look at him go. And I can kind of bend it out and forward if I want. Now, if you puppet warp too much, they start to look like macaroni. Right? And there's, there's other ways that we can work with it too. But if I wanted a little bend in that leg, that's how you can do it. You see? But I don't think I want that bend. Well, maybe. Yeah, actually, maybe I do want it. And I can adjust it in slight ways. Um, if I do Puppet Warp again to that same layer, I can just pull out the edges a little bit. Whoops, I need to anchor the feet. Just to widen that leg a little bit, because it is still just a warp tool. Right. Yeah. So actually, I like that. I'm going to keep that. Okay. So the only uh, creature layer I'm not deleting is the one that's a smart object and then the one that has the final pose. So I have two creatures here. And I always keep that smart object. So if I wanted to change its position completely, I can. And, and size it differently. But this is the one I'm going to work with. So now, how do I make this work in this environment? I need to get these. I'm going to puppet warp this maybe a little bit further down so it's just a little bit more in the water. So edit, puppet warp again. This really helps you kind of get to know your creature. Right? I'm going to go right to the middle of the hand. I'm going to anchor everything else. Try to keep it stable. Then I'm going to bring this hand down. Maybe bring this elbow down a little bit and the head down a little bit. And I can even pivot this a little bit more if I want to and bring it down. There we go. So now it's even more stable, right? And it kind of fits in that environment. But I need to get these to look a little bit like they're underwater. So instead of just being under fog, right, now I want water. And I can actually steal from existing texture fills and maybe work with this. So this is the surface of water with a waterfall. So I'll take a big chunk of this, duplicate it, Command-J, use my 100% eraser, 0% hardness, nice and big, using my uh, tablet now. So I have the pressure sensitivity for size, taking away the hard edge right, all the way around it. Even at the bottom. Moving it on top of the feet. I can command T and warp it out, right? I can play with its opacity. Kind of see, okay, let's see. Maybe I want it about there. And now I'm gonna take its opacity up and I'm gonna play with its color to make it look like the water. So I go to hue saturation, and because this is grayscale, because it's just a texture fill, I actually have to click colorize, and I can give it a color. 
So I'm going to give it a color of blue. I can even steal a color. Sometimes that works <laughs> from the image itself. But it'll look very one note, right? So I want a little bit darker. There we go. Now I can play with the opacity. And that's a little bit of what I'm looking for. So now I can erase away again, but maybe at a lower opacity because I've already gotten the hard edge off. And now I want to make a distinction between what's in the water and what's out of the water. Up here is all out of the water. But then the tips of the hands are sinking into it. A little too strong. And you can always uh, decrease your opacity. Okay. So that helps. That just shows kind of the, the tonal shift. But then I only really need it near the um, the feet. Like I don't need it out here. Now the other thing about being underwater is it darkens things, right? It lets less light through. So I can also go onto my creature, and I can directly dodge and burn it. This is the duplicate from my smart object. So I'm going to do the mid tones, and I'm going to burn the fingers a little bit. And that will make them look more like they're underwater. It's easy to overdo it. Come on, where is the, there we go. See, but that burn, maybe I only need about that much. Same thing with the back. These toes, I'm gonna burn them down, just the mid-tones. They'll look more like they're underwater that way. I don't have a reflection yet, but I'm starting to get kind of a surface of the water determined. Now, I can also dodge and burn just the texture elements. So here we have this 63% normal opacity texture fill at the water line. I can burn that in certain places, like underneath my creature, to give a little bit more of a shadow on the water. But this is not burning my creature, and it's not burning the landscape, it's burning the texture fill, which is a really subtle way to do it, right? And if ever I want things to be a little bit more clear, like that, that rock back there, I can always erase away from the texture fill as well. Okay. Now, I want to extend that kind of water layer on top of these rocks. So I'm going to duplicate it, Command J. And because it was only 63%, you know, that makes it look a lot darker. And I'm going to extend it just with my transform, free transform tool, extend it down, and then erase away from that. Right. But that little haze makes these look like they're under the water. And I'm safe erasing. Because I know what I want to show and what I want to reveal. Okay, but now this water looks like it's just kind of misty water, which is nice, but what if I want to trouble the water at that edge? Okay, this is, this is a little different. Now what I can do is I can go to my source material and I can go to my background and see what layer actually gave me that water. 
there we have some nice water in this layer. And I can take that and do some internal compositing, or I can go search for my own, right? So I'm going to take a little lip of water here, duplicate it, move it up and over everything, move it down, and warp it. This is why we do so much with compositing, because it, it's actually an amazing creative tool when you know what you're using it for. And I can warp it around the hand. This is just where the water is being disturbed by this big claw, right? And then I can erase away from it, get rid of those hard edges with a 100% eraser. At the top and bottom, again, using my pressure sensitive stylus. And that looks too severe, you know, as it is right there. But if I take the opacity down a little bit, see it starts to turn up the water and disturb it. If I stretch it out now that it's softened, it's going to work a little bit better. And I can warp it as well. Get kind of a less regular shape to it. And that's like ripples on the water. And if I want to, I can duplicate it and then grow it and extend it out. So there are actual ripples on the water that I then bend to radiate out from that impact point. So these are in two different duplicates, right? The ripples. And I can play with their opacity. And I can play with their blending mode. Like pin light might work well for this. And even a higher opacity, right? Yeah, it does work pretty well. Let's try pin light for this one at a higher opacity. See what soft light at 100% does. Yeah, that's pretty nice too. Try soft light here. Nope, not so much. Oh, that's hard light. Yeah, no, that works really well. But then I might need a little combination of both. So I'm going to make it normal at a low opacity and then really cut it down and then have those soft light ones too. So we're really using the advantages of digital here, the advantages of making lots and lots of copies when we need to. Now notice I'm actually overlapping my coral as well because this is all done on top of the texture fills. I could move my coral up and above, but I don't. I don't want it to be um, so limited. So instead, I'm going to take all of this water, I'm going to move it into its own group, right? And then move that down below the coral. So some of it's kind of nice. So maybe I keep it above, but then I just erase away from it. And if I want to, I think at this point, I can just merge that whole group into a layer. Oh, but I can't because there's different blending modes. So then it becomes about kind of selectively erasing away. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the coral layer. I'm going to select around it with the magic wand. I'm going to say select inverse. So it's actually selecting inside the coral shape. And then just like we did with the cartoon jumble, I'm going to erase away from these individual layers not by hitting delete, because I don't want to delete everything. I want to be more selective. But this will make sure I'm mapped just inside the coral shape. So I don't accidentally erase any of the work I did in the water. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. All right. Done. And then if there's any that just looks too muddied, this one I'm going to erase really lightly. Get the back edge of that foot still. 